woke up this morning to the sunrise And I said to God, what a great beginning to my day The beauty of your creation helps me to say that you upon me So clearly said, fear not, for I am with you. And I don't need to worry about my life. The past can decide who I am and what I can become. I can go far, I can soar high. All my tears begin to fade, and I can feel your hands of grace. Upon me, I can sing loud, I can bring praise for you. Good morning, friends. Welcome all of you to church at home with LifeBridge. We're coming to you all the way from the living room of uh, our home here in Chandigarh. And also we're going to be going across to the various homes of our senior leadership team who are going to contribute to today's worship. Together, I believe that God is going to bless us. Together, I believe God is going to help us to connect with him and hear his voice and worship him and seek his face. During times like this, we need to seek the Lord more. And what a better way than this for us to unite our hearts and minds together in the presence of God, together worship God through this medium of internet. We are coming to you for the second Sunday of our church lockdown in our part of the world uh, here in Chandigarh. Uh, we really want to thank all the members of our church who are standing together in this time of crisis supporting one another, praying for one another. Thank you so much, Lifebridge Church family here in Chandigarh for your love and support and prayers 
for the Ministry of Lightbridge and for the church family as a whole and standing in the gap for the region and the nation and the nations of the world in a season like this. But today we're going to begin with a time of worship. We have Adibu and Christina waiting for us on the other side. He's going to join us soon. And then uh, we're going to have a time of worship with uh, Usha and David. And then uh, we'll shift to hearing a practical encouragement and exhortation from Saba, uh, who is part of our Life Youth and Young Adults uh, ministry team with Pastor Sam. And so we're looking forward to that time of encouragement uh, that we're going to hear from Saba. And then we're going to have a time of worship with the Lazarus children who are part of our worship team. Uh, Valentina, Nathan and Jonathan will be leading us in a time of worship. And after that, we have a special message, a word of encouragement that I believe will inspire you, build your faith in times like this. So please don't go away. Stay right through to the end of the service and receive everything that God has for you today. May the Lord bless you as you worship him with Adibu and Christina. जैसे कि हम सब जानते हैं कि पूरी दुनिया में महामारी फैली हुई है तो अब आए हम प्रार्थना करें दुआ करें इस संसार के लिए इस पूरी दुनिया के हर लोगों के लिए जो इस बीमारी से होके गुजर रहे हैं कम लेर स्प्रेड हो गया फॉर होल वर्ल्ड फेथफुली एंड लेर एस आस्क गॉड टू हील द होल वर्ल्ड सिंग दिस सॉन्ग दुआ करे Of what's happening around us, 
all the difficult situations sickness and the things that we face today it is always good to worship the lord because he is worthy of all our worship honor and praise and he is the only one who can change our situations he is our healer he will strengthen us and deliver us and restore our lives from all these difficulties so let's worship the lord this morning everyone you're listening to the live webcast of our church life bridge and what i'd like us all to focus at while we are at home while we are enjoying our stay at home i hope so is our families uh, well our god is a god of families and a god who blesses uh, the generations and generations of uh, people he is a very family oriented god and uh, at this time where the entire world is practicing social distancing uh, we are not distant from god and of course god has kept us i believe our families very close to each other uh, our families are contained in our homes and i think a family is what makes a house a home i hope you agree with me on that so even while we sit stand or lie down or just watching tv or enjoying the company of our family let's completely depend on god for his protection for his provision for his blessings uh and at the same time let's also be very attentive to what the lord has to stay, say to us in the times when there are bizarre news theories and conspiracies and what not about coronavirus spreading all around the globe i'd like to declare peace to you uh the bible encourages us to declare peace unto households uh this is i'm talking from the book of samuel so following and obliging by that and as a daughter of christ i declare peace unto you and to your household in the name of our lord and son jesus christ and my encouragement to you is about uh the matter of fact that god will protect you and god will bless your home no matter what the bible promises us that the lord blesses the homes of the righteous and i just hope and i pray that you would be able to maintain and you have gotten your righteousness in Christ well it's good to be at home home sweet home home is the place where we all want to be a scholar once said that a traveler traveled around the world and finally found whatever he wanted within his home so at this time when god has intentionally if i may call it placed us in inside the walls of our homes inside the walls of our houses let's be intentional about what are we doing as a family together at the same time uh, where we all try to have fun let us not live uh, live our lives and become callous about the way we are dealing with our family especially because we are not used to staying together aisa to nahi hai ki hum ek sath rehna jante hain bahut der se kyunki hamari jeevan shaili kuch is tarah ki ho gayi hai ki hame bahut safar karna padta hai aur hum ghar se bahar rehte hain ya pure ghar mein shayad ek ya do jan bachte hain hum pura din bitane के लिए या कई बार वो भी नहीं तो बहुत देर के बाद हमारा घर आना होता है बट काश कि ऐसा हो कि हमारे घरों में इन हालातों के बावजूद शांति बनी रहे मेनी टाइम्स इट्स uh it's it's very uncommon to find everybody at home because of the uh, pressing pressures of life and the way our life has taken turns and uh, because of our job demands it's not that everybody stays home all the time so it becomes all the more challenging during these quarantine times to stay together uh, apparently some of your family members don't 
might not be seeming like family members to you you might be uh, thinking well they are just strangers in the house and well if that's the case this is the time to recollect what the bible has to say about families it says if you want to start if you want to see heaven established on earth just like it is in heaven if you want to see it happening on earth to pay close attention to your families अपने अगर आप चाहते हैं कि स्वर्ग जैसा माहौल अगर आपको पृथ्वी पर आप चाहते हैं तो अपने घरों पर अपने परिवारों पर आप ध्यान देना शुरू करें बाइबल में ऐसा लिखा है कि आप ध्यान दें कि यही की छोटी लोमड़ियां आकर तुम्हारी दाग की बारी को ना लूट लें द बाइबल से इज बी केयरफुल दैट नॉट द लिटिल फॉक्सिस कम एंड ईट ऑफ लंडर यो बिन Uh, so well while i share with you this uh, verse from the bible what i like you to do with me is to go about a live fox hunt in your house yes you heard me right main chahti hu ki aap apne gharon mein thoda ghoom kar dekhein ki kahin wo lomdiyan aap ki daag ki bari par akraman to nahi kar rahi aur ye wo jo lomdiyan hai ya ye ya wo jo lomdiyan hai wo kaun si lomdiyan hai what are these foxes which the bible talks about and what are these foxes all about and while we live in our families let's not live callously but let's be aware and cautious just as much as we are about sanitizers and keeping the house clean and tidy about how can we maintain the peace and harmony of christ within our homes within our reach and within the four walls of our house uh, so what these little foxes could mean what do you think well i think that these little foxes could be the habits and attitudes uh, which all of us carry within ourselves and sometimes are evident to people who live right next to us yes i'm talking about our family our spouses our children our grandparents our mother in law our father in law I don't know about what's your family setup but we all have a family right so these little foxes which are very common are unkindness they are not dikhani preoccupation hamesha hi busy rehna um for getting special days ek dusre ke bare mein khayal kisi ka birthday nikal gaya saal gira nikal gayi iske bare mein aapko koi khayal nahi hai aap hamesha hi kuch na kuch karne mein vyast hain aap hamesha budbudate rehte hain nagging is one big issue one little fox which could become big criticism is another little fox neglecting the lords aur aap ikatthe baithne baithte nahi hain prarthna karne ke liye unhealthy tv habits or eating habits शायद आप अभी अभी जैसे जैसे मैंने ये बोलना शुरू किया है शायद आपको याद आ रहा होगा कुछ और लोमड़ियाँ या कुछ और भीड़ियों के बारे में या आपकी दाग की बारी में कार ऐसा तो नहीं है कि मैंने इन लोमड़ियों को अपने घर के अंदर आने दे दिया है अगर ऐसा हो गया है तो काश ऐसा हो कि आप धीरे धीरे करके इनको अपने घर से बाहर निकाल दें आप घर से बाहर मत जाइए पर इन लोमड़ियों को घर के बाहर निकाल दें सो वॉट आई इंसिस्ट ऑन telling you is this that let's be very cautious let's be aware of letting these foxes inside our homes in inside our vineyard that if they have come to steal what doesn't belong to them let's just push them out let's not go out but let's just push these foxes out of our home and i just pray that the peace that passes all understanding would engulf our families especially in a time like this the bible encourages us in the book of peter to be self controlled and alert हमारे को बाइबल ने सिखाया है कि हमें अपने आप को काबू में रखना है नियंत्रण में रखना है और चौकस रहना है कि इन लोमड़ियों से हम बचे रहें सो इट इज आर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू बी वेयर एंड बी कॉशियस एंड सेल्फ कंट्रोल विद इन आर फैमिलीज बिकॉज दीज फॉक्सेज कैन कॉज ग्रेट डैमेज इफ अनचेक्ट अगर हमें इन लोमड़ियों की तरफ ख्याल नहीं दिया इनसे घबराना तो नहीं है बट ये हमारे घरों में बहुत ज्यादा विवाद का जो है सृज सकती हैं बहुत सारे विवाद को पैदा कर सकती हैं तो हमें बहुत चौकस रहना है जैसा कि पहले पत्र से उसके पांचवें अध्याय उसकी आठवीं और नवी आयत में लिखा है कि चौकस रहो अपने आप को ध्यान में ध्यान में रखो कि कहीं ये लोमड़ी आकर तुम्हारी ताक की बारी को ना खा जाए दूसरी बात जो है दूसरे ग्रंथ उसके पांचवें अध्याय उसके ग्यारहवें अध्याय माफ कीजिएगा और चौदवी आयत में लिखा है कि शैतान एक बहुत बड़ा भैरूबिया है और एक जो फरिश्ते के नाई वो आपके सामने आता है uh in second corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14 it states that satan masquerades himself as the angel of light he disguises himself is baat par aap dhyan dein ki jo shaitan hai wo ek bhairubiya hai aur wo aakar apne aap ko ek farishte ke nahi aapke samne aayega aur kahega ye lomdiya ye kya baat kar rahe ho ye koi mayne nahi rakhti satan might come and say that these foxes are very unimportant these are not certain things you should be you know uh, watching so carefully in trying times like these 
yes, I'm talking about all those jokes which we used to put other people down. I'm talking about uh, things when we say that, you know, it's just life. We have to do it for our children's sake. We have to stay away from each other for years and two years. But this is not the author of the Bible. Um, शायद ये सोचते हैं कि ऐसा सब कुछ करना ठीक है बट अपने परिवारों से अलग रहना सालों साल या अपने बच्चों के लिए करना या गंदे चुटकुलों पर हंसना या मीम्स आजकल बहुत ज्यादा चल रही हैं उनको देखकर और ऐसे हंसना जैसे कुछ भी नहीं हुआ ये सारी बातें जो हैं ये बहरूबिया हमारे जीवन में लेकर आता है और उन्हें ऐसा दिखाता है कि ये शायद सब कुछ करना ठीक है बट बाइबल का ये कहना है कि ऐसा सब कुछ करना ठीक नहीं है द बाइबल एनकरेज अस नॉट टू लिव आर लाइफ एज फुलिश बट एज वाइज सो uh what i'm trying to get at is that let's not uh live lives uh, under disguise but let's live light of uh, our lives around and based on the truth which is christ jesus kaash aisa ho ki hum us behrubiye ka jeevan ya do moha jeevan jeena ban kare aur ek sachai ka jeevan ya satya ko manne wale sach jo yeshu hai un par aadharit aur nirbhar hokar apna jeevan jeena shuru karte उसके बाद जो खास बात है वो ये है कि यहोशु ने ये कहा है कि मैं और मेरा घराना मिलकर प्रभु की सेवा करेंगे क्या आप ऐसा चाहते हैं अगर आप ऐसा चाहते हैं तो जरूरी है कि आपके जो परिवारों का विवाद है वो खत्म हो जाए जोशुआ सेज मी एंड माई हाउस होल्ड विल सर्व द लॉर्ड डी यू ऑल्सो विश टू डू सो येस इफ यू वॉन्ट टू डू सो दी ओनली वे इज टू अवॉइड स्ट्राइफ यू के नॉट बी कंप्लीटली हेटिंग योर ब्रदर एंड बी प्रीचिंग लव ऑन दी अदर हैंड Uh, the bible always encourages us to settle the matter, matter with our brothers and sisters before we come to the lord our god is a god of restoration and i just pray in this time that even during this time when we have socially distanced ourselves not from jesus and our family of course uh, that the relations which were strained be overcome that the healings which were lo- uh, the healings uh, which were misplaced by losses come back in the name of jesus i just pray that relationships would be restored and our habits and attitudes towards ourselves and others would completely change and we would become the true advocates and true disciples of Jesus Christ meri ye prarthna hai ki hamara jo aadate hain aur jo hamara vyavhar hai ek dusre ke prati wo bilkul badal jaye taki hum sachmuch mein yeshu ke chele ban jaye आखिर में मैं आपसे ये kehna chahungi ki hamare gharon mein abhi samay hai ki hum parmeshwar ke liye ek vedi banaye this is the very right time a very apt time to build a family altar for christ a family altar where we can all sit and pray together a family altar where we can dedicate each other and our lives to jesus that would help us in serving our christ jesus together as a family ye samay sahi hai ki hum parmeshwar ki jo vedi shayad dheh chuki thi hamara jeevan jeete jeete kahin jisme hame kho diya tha us vedi ko dobara banaye taki hum parmeshwar के के सम्मुख इकट्ठे एक परिवार तौर पर आके प्रार्थना में समय बिताए और एक दूसरे को एक दूसरे के प्रोत्साहन का कारण बने आखिर में मैं आपसे बस यही कहना चाहूंगी कि रोमियो की पुस्तक उसके बारहवें अध्याय और उसके अठारहवीं आयत में लिखा है हर वो कोशिश मुमकिन कोशिश करो कि हर एक इंसान के साथ तुम्हारी शांति बने रहे आई वुड लाइक टू encourage you with this closing verse which is in the book of romans uh, chapter 12 verse 18 where it says make every possible uh, uh, effort to be at peace with every possible person around and let there be no root of bitterness amongst you because that one root can defile many so that is my prayer that that there will be no root of dip, uh, bitterness amongst us even as a family uh, mai yahi prarthna hai ki wo एक जो कड़वाहट की जड़ हमारी फैमिलीज में हमारे परिवारों में जड़ पकड़ने ना पाए और हमारे परिवारों में परमेश्वर की शांति बने रहे सो इन दी एंड आई वुड लाइक टू जस्ट से सिंपल थिंग्स स्टे इन लव स्टे इन पीस स्टे सैनिटाइज एंड ऑफ
Welcome back. I'm so glad uh, that we could have that time of worship together with our worship team, even though we are scattered in different homes, that we can unite our hearts together in worship in times like this. And I pray that the encouragement from Saba have spoken to our heart, that in times like this, when we are confined to the four walls, uh, life can be difficult, that uh, we don't allow the little foxes to enter and bring division and disunity among the family of God. And our hearts need to be humble enough to say, I'm sorry, humble enough to say, maybe I have made a mistake, humble enough to resolve the conflicts and love one another uh, more, become stronger and deeper in our relationship uh, with one another. And I know that the Bible tells us very clearly that the devil comes to steal, kill and destroy. And I pray that we will not become an advocate for the devil to bring that work into our families. Today, this morning, I have a word of encouragement and I pray that this word from Apostle Paul will minister to, to all our hearts. And I'm talking about uh, a vaccine for our anxiety in times like this, when uh, the whole world is under so much of stress, fear. And I'm thinking about the people that do not have hope and, and the peace of God in their heart. Uh, the assurance of their eternity and the future, uh, the not knowing what the future uh, lies ahead. It can be quite uh, uh, blinding. It can be quite uh, distressing. Uh, but I thank God that we as people of God have the surety of our hope uh, firmly founded uh, in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And that we know the future. We know exactly what God is doing in the world. None of these things uh, that are happening around us to a child of God is strange. Uh, none of these things are unexpected. None of these things that is, we are witnessing right before our eyes is a shock to us. These are the realities of the end times. Uh, definitely, I do believe that we live in the season of the birth pangs of the soon return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so it is time now uh, that we repent of our sins, humble ourselves, call upon the name of the Lord and turn to the living God. The idols of, of mankind have come crashing down right before our eyes. People have neglected God. People have put their trust in themselves, let alone trusting one another. And there has been so much of hatred, disunity based on caste, color, religion, and so forth. But today, God is doing a work of unifying humanity. God is doing a work of calling people back to himself. And I pray that we will awaken ourselves to this season, to stand in the gap, to pray for the nations, and to believe and see the victory of God. But humanly speaking, I'm sure all of you have felt the pressure. I have felt the pressure this week just being confined to this home, not able to go out and uh, not able to interact with the people, not able to do the things that we have been so used to doing. It has been building up in my mind and there has been those times when I felt the pressure so hard and I wanted to feel like screaming. I wanted to feel like, you know, just smash my hand on the table. So that's the human element of that distress, anxiety that is building up in each one of our hearts. And when you look at the Bible, uh, the people of God, the, the most strongest of all, uh, the most uh, strongest men and women of God have felt that. And so it's quite natural uh, to feel that way. Uh, recently, a friend of mine was sharing with me and encouraging uh, me uh, that this paradox of uh, death and grieving on one side of the spectrum of humanity. And then we have hope and faith on the other side of the spectrum of human uh, life uh, in balance. And so this is reality. Death and grief is reality. Tragedy and the times like this, when we see hundreds and hundreds of people's lives are affected, not only from COVID-19, but because of the lockdown. I'm thinking about the poor people. I'm thinking about the daily wages, uh, people who have no source of uh, obtaining uh, a piece of, of roti for a meal. Uh, or they can't even find water because they are homeless. They do not have running waters. And so I'm thinking about those people who are stranded, people who have, um, you know, uh, diabetic issues, people who have chronic illnesses where they need ongoing treatment. Those people are also suffering. But in times like this, we have the reality of the grief on this side. 
but then we have the reality of hope and faith in Jesus. And to balance these in perspective and hold this in balance in times like this is very, very important. So today I'm going to talk about anxiety that can cause the pendulum of grief and death swinging, weighing heavily uh, and bringing us to a point of grief and death in our own lives taking us away from the element of hope and faith. And so anxiety, and anxiety I call anxiety a thief. Anxiety is a thief that comes to steal our joy. Anxiety is a thief that comes and takes away the peace that we have in our heart, uh, the confidence that we have in our heart. Anxiety cripples us, it debilitates us, it, uh, it makes us numb, uh, it makes us um, not it becomes so careless that we can do uh, crazy things. And so in this age where we are living right now, uh, so much of um, uh, hatred, wars, uh, terrorism, um, natural calamities or plagues like this in the last few months, the whole world has been ravaged under the hands of these things. Even as COVID-19 uh, is spreading around the world, we know the tragic story of the terror attack upon the Sikh temple in Afghanistan, where many uh, Sikh uh, believers were killed by the terrorists, even as COVID-19 was killing thousands of people. We just had a fire disaster in Australia. And so in times like this, it is so easy for us to become anxious when people are losing their job. I'm hearing that in many parts of the world, anywhere between, between 40 to 60 percentage of labor force have been laid off from their work. Factories and companies are closing down and uh, the stock market have come crashing right before our eyes. So life can become very uncertain, very stressful. And uh, uh, it, is, it is natural for us to feel anxious. It is natural from a human perspective to be driven by anxiety. People need, in times like this, reassurance, a renewal of their faith in God who can and will protect them. And it is that faith in God that will sustain us in times like this. We need to pray for and walk in the miracle of divine protection in times like this. Uh, think about the people of God, thinking about the Passover. You know, it was an incredible experience for the people of God to live in the protection of God, to experience the Passover. And, uh, and, and as you read uh, the book uh, that narrates that story in the Old Testament, you will see that they had a story to tell generations, down through generations, of God's faithfulness in how he preserved them. And I pray that during this crisis, that your faith will be so strong. You will uh, depend on God. You will trust God uh, to see the victory of God, to see the protection of God. We will come through COVID-19 on the other side. And maybe 10 years down the track, 20 years down the track, the coming of the Lord tarries, God gives you generations, you have a story to tell how he protected you, how he preserved you when all around you people were dying in hopelessness. In Philippians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul wrote, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. What a powerful word from a man who knows what it means to live in lockdown. A man who experienced some of the most horrible human tortures possible. Shipwreck, being beaten up, being persecuted, uh, all kinds of experiences of torment. This man writes to us, and as he writes to the, to the believers in the, book, in the church in Philippi, I believe God is speaking to us through this word. If you can truly embrace these words this week, I encourage you to read this verse every day as you wake up in the morning. I want, I want to encourage you to meditate on this word every day of this week as you wake up each morning because I believe there is going to be not only an insight of revelation and wisdom that's going to come to you but there is going to be an impartation of the peace of God that was 
upon Apostle Paul will be transferred into your heart. I believe there is going to be an impartation of the spirit of peace, a spirit, a spirit of confidence in Christ that will be transferred to us uh, as we read this verse. If we believe this verse uh, that Apostle Paul have wrote, if we have, if we own this verse, I believe uh, that it will revolutionize the whole approach to this particular season that we are all going through. So from uh, this Bible verse, let's uh, look for a fourfold approach to understanding and overcoming anxiety. There are four things that Apostle Paul is giving us as the keys to dealing with or tackling uh, the season of anxiety in our lives. First of all, uh, we see the problem. The problem is uh, the problem of uh, anxiety and stress. Um, anxiety, as, as the dictionary defines it, uh, it's coming from the Greek word merinau, literally means to tear or to divide the mind. To tear or to divide the mind. Isn't that what's happening right now? It's, it's tearing apart our lives. It's tearing apart our confidence. Anxiety is tearing apart our relationships with God, for some people, with one another for many people or tearing apart their own life into hopelessness. So it's an, a very apt description that Paul is talking about. Be anxious about nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Um, on one hand, I understand why panic is so widespread and why there is so much panic in the world as people were uh, hoarding toilet peppers, uh, some of the most basic necessity of, of life. And people were uh, hoarding food and uh, the shops were ransacked in many places, broken into and people were stealing food. And uh, so you can see the panic. And uh, because you take the current state of things uh, into perspective, people uh, unsure of the future tend to be driven to do these things but I've been talking to a lot of people of God who have their faith anchored in Christ uh, they're going about life as normal they normally do a, a shopping for a month or a week or 10 days whatever I have talked to many people who have not done anything outside of what they normally do because they have confidence and trust in God and so if you don't live with an anchor of faith you're going to drift in the sea of anxiety and isolation. You know, I remember the story uh, of uh, uh, when uh, I was experiencing a drowning experience many years ago. When I took my family uh, on a boat along with our family friend. And we anchored our boat uh, in a lake that's about 35 feet deep. And as we were uh, having fun, we decided to go for a, a little bit of a time of swimming in the water. And uh, we decided to have a little bit of fun. Uh, we all had our life jackets. We had noodles in our hands that will enable us to float in the water. But I wanted to show off in front of my family that I know how to swim. Many of you may not know that not many Indians know how to swim. And I'm one of those Indians who don't know how to swim. And so I wanted to show my family that I can swim. So I get on the deck of the boat and I take out my life jacket. I throw it into the water and my daughter Dawn, who was at that time, I believe she was about nine or 10 years of age. She was there. My son, David, who was a few years younger to uh, Dawn, much smaller. My wife and my family friends were all in the water. My life jacket fell, uh, falls uh, very near to where Dawn was floating in the water. As I jumped off the deck, Dawn, my daughter, takes my life jacket and throws it further away. And as I was almost airborne, I can see my life jacket going further away from where I have thrown it. I know in my heart how much I can swim. I know in my heart how much capacity I have to swim and reach to my life jacket. But when I saw that my life jacket has gone beyond my capacity, beyond my reach of ability to swim, I began to panic. I began to become anxious. And let me tell you, my friends, that day was most, one of the most fearful, most dreadful day of my life, where I literally thought I was going to drown and die. And the, the, the reality on that day was that as I was 
trying to swim towards reaching my life jacket. I was anxious, I was fearful, uh, my strength was giving up. My body that was like this became like this and I, you know you can't swim when your body is drowning. And so I was heading towards the life jacket. The more I got close to it, the more the life jacket was drifting away. The waves and the panic that I was creating made the life jacket to go further away from me. It was tearing things apart in my life. And so finally I was gulping water, I was, I was almost going to die and my friends realized something is wrong. And then Usha, Usha asked my host family and said, James is drowning, perhaps he needs some help. And suddenly my host who knew how to swim, who is aware of the lake and everything, as a senior man who's very relaxed, very stress, you know, stress-free sitting on the deck, watching all of this happen, he shouted out and said, James, relax, you got the life jacket in your hand. I was putting my hand for help. I was thinking I'm dying. I'm thinking this is the last day of my life. Little did I know that I did make it to my life jacket. Little did I know that I had the life jacket in my hand. Do you know, with the life jacket in my hand, I was drowning. Friends, isn't that what's happening to the people in the world today? A good majority of the people. When we know that we have a savior, when we know that we can anchor our faith in the one who holds the key to life and death, one who is in control of the universe, one who designed this world and everything that there is in this world, that in, that in times like this, we can trust him and depend on him. And so that day, God really taught me a lesson that when times gets difficult, when times become tough, we need to just rest in the arms of God a little bit more. We need to put our trust in the hands of God a little, little bit more. But that sea of isolation, that sea of distress, that water when you feel uh, you are drowning, it is not a pleasant experience. It's a scary place to be. And I understand that because in my own life, I have been there many times and God has taught me over the years Lessons of trust, lessons of faith, lessons of anchoring in God. But things are different for a child of God who can anchor their faith in God. And so Paul now gives us the prescription. He says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Notice it's a command Paul giving to the believers. It is not a suggestion. It is a, Paul doesn't say, I suggest you to relax. He doesn't say, I request you to be relaxing. I, I don't, uh, you know, I, perhaps you can consider not to be anxious. No, he says, be anxious for nothing. It is a command, my friends. And uh, it, can be un it can be seen like something unrealistic. How can you do that? How can you say uh, not to be anxious when I see what I see right before my eyes? Uh, the United States have now taken the poor position in this lead uh, war for uh, COVID-19 and, and New York has become the epic center and my own family members, many are right in the middle of that situation in New York. Uh, my cousin who works in a nursing home just told me that his boss has been uh, tested positive and uh, he has had contact with him and so there is Definitely, how can, you, how can you not be anxious when you feel suspicious, when you feel worried? Perhaps I had a conversation with my boss, perhaps I went to his office, perhaps I touched the doorknob uh, of my office, uh, boss's office. So the prescription Paul gives us here is a command not to worry. And that's exactly what Jesus himself said, didn't he? When he said in uh, Matthew chapter 6, Verse 25 to 26, Jesus said, uh, do not worry about your life. So, so Paul is echoing uh, the words of Jesus himself. Paul says, do not, uh, Jesus says, do not worry about your life. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither, neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. 
Look at the birds. Look at the animals. Look at, look at them. You know, in times like this, when all of human beings are indoors, now the birds and the animals have a little bit more freedom to move around. And I'm seeing more squirrels. I'm seeing more birds chirping outside my window. And it is a beautiful experience, very relaxing. I love watching nature. I love the birds chirping uh, outside my window. And so it's a beautiful experience. And Jesus says, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather, nor gather into bonds. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Hallelujah. Are you not more valuable than they? Are you not more valuable than the birds? God is speaking to us today, my friends. Who are we? Can be very unhealthy, not to mention very unbecoming of a child of God. If you start panicking, if you start worrying, if you start worrying about your family that are not with you. Maybe your children are far away from you right now. Maybe your own children are in a place where COVID-19 is spreading rapidly and you're worried about them and you start panicking. Child of God, it is against the will of God for us to be worrying and becoming anxious. We are violating the order given by God in his word. We are violating the order that Jesus himself gave it to us. When we do not listen and heed to this promise that Jesus himself given us in his word, we are saying to ourselves, God, I don't trust you. I don't trust your promise. I don't believe your word. Is that what we are saying? It's time for us to think. It's time for us to really search our heart. And so Paul takes us to the third key here, the problem, the prescription, and now we move to the solution or uh, the medium through which we can find the solution. Paul says, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. The cure for worry is to redirect our energy and replace your anxiety with prayer. We can redirect our energy. Every energy that we spend in worrying can be rechanneled into a time of prayer. And I thank God that during the last few days, I had more time to, to reflect, to sit in the God's presence, to pray and seek his face. And I want to thank many of the pastors who joined me in this 21 day All India Lockdown Prayer Summit every day. From 4.30 to 5 o'clock, I have a handful of pastors from different parts of India that are coming together online through a Zoom conference and we are able to seek the face of the Lord corporately. I'm able to reach out to all our coalition of apostolic leaders uh, all around the world, particularly in the Sark region, just to have a conversation, just to have a time of prayer with them. And I believe these prayer times that we spend with one another over the phone, over the video, alone, whatever ways in which we can spend more time with God, God will take away our anxiety. So the first solution, the first step in this process of healing and recovery, before you need to go and see a counselor, before you go and seek the help of a prophet or somebody else, is to seek the face of God. Go to God in time of prayer. Notice the different kinds of prayer mentioned in this verse. First of all, it's simply, it's a simple prayer. Uh, when we talk about that, the simplicity of prayer is talking more, Paul is talking about worship and devotion. So whenever you are tempted to worry uh, and the, the anxiety is coming to your heart in this week moving forward, as we continue to stay locked down, um, and more and more countries around the world is locking down. Some of these nations are, I suspect, um, um, I thought that they should have locked down a little bit more earlier. But as, as many of you are going to be locked down in house situation, I pray that you will find time for worship and devotion and spending time uh, in the presence of God. So instead of worrying, Instead of thinking about these things, instead of watching the television news, sitting in front of TV all day from morning till evening, uh, spend time in worship, spend time in prayer. 
In fact, in our home, uh, we only listen to uh, a reliable television news uh, morning for about five minutes and or 10 minutes or lunchtime for maybe about five minutes or 10 minutes or maybe in the evening for about five or 10 minutes. And then we lock the TV off. We do not watch the television news because the television news is brought to you by people that do not love God, do not have a, a fear of God or a faith in God. And so when they speak a report, they do not speak from the perspective of hope and faith, but they speak from the perspective of curse, disaster, calamity, death, devil, and demon. And so it can weigh very heavily on us and it can suppress us. It can give you that feeling that you are indeed drowning. And so Paul says, come in prayer. Then the second level of that prayer experience, once you move from worship and devotion in God's word is to have supplication, uh, prayer, supplication or emotional, heartfelt crying out to God. And that is a time of thanksgiving or thanking God for what he has done and what he has promised to do in your life, in your family and so forth. And finally, there is a command to simply let your requests be made known to God. So there are three stages of that prayer that Paul is talking about here in this verse. First of all, a simple prayer in worship and in devotion. And then supplication where you are thanking God for the promises, what he has already promised to you in his word. That God is going to protect you. He's going to watch over you. He's going to supply all your needs according to his glorious riches uh, in Christ Jesus. And also to simply let your request be made known to God. So if your request is to pray for your children, pray for your church members, just name them one by one. And join with as many prayer movements that are happening right now online or uh, through phone or one by one on one or alone time in prayer. So prayer and fasting. This is an important component of living an anxiety free life. And unfortunately, in the modern world that we live in, these things are not really appreciated or received well. People do not like to fast much these days at all. But if you consider the words in Matthew chapter 17, verse 21, it says, however, this kind does not go except by prayer and fasting. Jesus is talking about a certain kind of bondages, certain kind of attacks that comes upon us will not go unless we fast and pray. And so I believe COVID-19 is one of those epidemic or pandemic that as many people rightly call it, is one of those enemies work, enemies attack that's coming upon the world and God allows it, he, God grants the permission to let few things happen in the world for a reason and that reason is for us to seek his face more. And as we persist in that prayer and faith and I believe God can bring healing upon the nations. God can set us free. God can uh, take this COVID-19 away and bring life back to normal. And finally, as I close my word today, the promise. First of all, we have the problem, uh, and that is anxiety. Then we have the prescription, and that is uh, to be anxious of nothing, to anchor our faith in God and rest in Him. And thirdly, the prayer, and, and the prayer of worship and devotion, the prayer of supplication and intercession and making our prayers known to God, the basic needs that we need to tell God about. Finally, the promise, my friends, is this, the peace of God, which suppresses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. How powerful, how wonderful it is that we can have peace of God, the shalom peace of God, Remember when Jesus rebuked the wind and the storm, the only word he uttered was shalom, peace. And sometimes when we think about peace, we think of it as Tao or something gentle, something soft. But let me tell you, peace or shalom is a powerful force, more forceful, more powerful than COVID-19. It is more forceful than the wind and the storm. And so speak shalom 
over your circumstances, the peace of God over your life. Speak shalom over your own life. Not just think about it. Tell it yourself. Let your word from your mouth be heard in your ear. I declare shalom over James today. I declare shalom over my family today. Let the peace of God, as you do these things, as you come to God in prayer, as you put your faith in him, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. What God is, what God is speaking to us here is that the peace of God that transcends human, human ability to explain will come upon our hearts. I want you to read Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 and due to lack of time we're not going to read that today. But it's a tranquil feeling of confidence that it's going to be okay. That all is going to be, going to be well. That everything be fine. That everything is in God's hand. The Bible tells us my friends that uh, not even a hair uh, falls off our head without his knowledge. And if it does, he knows about it. And so if I'm going to die because of this virus, well, God knows about that too. And so nothing to be fearful, nothing to be panicking for me because my hope, my eternity, my relationship with God is secure. And I know if I die today, where I will spend my eternity, where I'll be. My last breath on this earth, somebody said, is my first breath in heaven. Friends, life is a journey. And I like to always illustrate it with our journey on this road. And I like to drive the car. As I drive the car, you know, sometimes uh, when we come to the, not sometimes, all times, when we come to an intersection, we see the red light. We stop. We stop because if you don't stop at the red light, there's going to be a collision because it's green on the other side. Somebody could be driving through and you can have a head-on collision. So we stop. But God allows certain interceptions in our lives. As we are racing through this life and we're going full speed. And I know many of us have been going full speed this year, 2020. For me has been full speed from January. I have not stopped. I've been going at full speed of 120. Now suddenly I didn't see a red light coming but there is a red light from heaven now. We have a head-on collision but thank God that this collision is not going to kill us. It's not going to destroy us. It is a God encounter. It is a God collision in our lives for God to display his greatness for God to demonstrate his work in and through us. For God to reveal his glory through us in this world. And just like the people of Israel. And I believe that as we come through this, we will have a story to tell the generations down through the line. I pray that this God, will, uh, this word will bless you today. As you enter uh, your life in the season with anxiety, uh, take the vaccine of prayer. And exit with the promise. The promise of God's presence. The promise that God will answer us. The promise that he will see us through. Let me pray with you today. I want you to just close your eyes wherever you're watching us right now. In the name of Jesus. Put your hope in him. Believe in him. Maybe you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Today is the day to repent of your sins. And ask God to forgive you of all your sins. And come to Jesus. So that you too can have this Shalom faith that we're talking about. Shalom peace that we're talking about. The peace of God will fill your heart. Friends, it's a beautiful place to be. In the promise of God. In the security of God. In times like this. Give your life to Jesus. This can be the greatest miracle. That God has ever done in your life. In the midst of chaos. In the midst of confusion, fear, and all the depression that's happening in the world and more things to come. Give your life to Jesus. Experience the newness of life and the peace in your heart today. Father, we just thank you for everyone who joined us on church at home with our church here in Chandigarh Life Bridge. We thank you for all the people who are watching us right now. I pray for all the Life Bridge, our church family today who are watching. I pray for every one of them that you will secure them, guard them in faith, Lord. 
I pray that you will preserve all of us. I pray for those people who are opening their heart to accept Jesus today, that you will come to their heart. Give them the assurance of peace, assurance of their salvation, their eternity in you, Father. We bless you. We thank you for the life of Paul that spoke to us very profoundly today. We anchor our faith in this word today, and I pray that this will be a time of impartation of faith, of confidence, of trust in you, Father. That we will not be anxious for anything, but we will trust you. We, we will come to you in prayer, believing and receiving everything that you have for us. We praise you, we worship you, we give you all the glory, all the honor, for you are a mighty God. We trust you, Father. We love you today. We praise you. We thank you for answering our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. May the love of God the Father, the grace of His Son Jesus, and the sweet communion and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with all of God's people who are watching us now, who will watch this live stream later. Everyone, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week ahead. See you next Sunday.